my name is Victor from Kalu Calais and um, this is the Job Job Bar. You're very welcome. Uh, today I'm going to make a drink called the Rob Roy, which essentially is a Manhattan, but with scotch instead of bourbon. So what we need is um, a few different ingredients. We need a mixing glass full of ice, keep it cold. We need the base spirit, which is scotch. Today I'm using uh, Okintosh and Three Wood, which is a lowland whiskey. Uh, three Wood comes from that the age. First, um, the, the, the whiskey in um, bourbon barrels, and then they finish it off with two different kinds of cherries one Oloroso and one Pedro Jimenez. And both of them add <coughs> different characteristics to this um, concoction, so to say. We need sweet vermouth. I've chosen a quite light style of vermouth because. Uh, Okintosh and Three Wood is quite a light spirit. It's a lowland spirit, it has lots of life to it, even though it has quite a dark color, and people would think that it has more of a sweeter and, and rounded taste. It has those characteristics, but it has a lot of life on the tongue as well, a lot of zest. Um, martini, quite a light style of the move that adds a nice sweetness to it. And then we also need aromatic bitters. And in this case, we're using Peychaud's. Just for the simple fact that it has this zest in a slightly uneasy thing, it works well with scotch of all sorts actually. So. Rob Roy is, an, I think it's an, he's an old folk hero from Scotland, uh, but the drink is named after a Broadway show that was playing around the time when this cocktail was created, which is around the 1890s I think, uh, in New York at a hotel called the Waldorf Astoria. Which is where the Empire State Building is to this day now, actually, so... <clears throat> I've chilled my glass, let the ice be in, so we start with a nice cold glass. But I'm still gonna pour out the excess water, so we don't dilute it more than we actually need to, so to say. Um, I'm gonna start putting in two parts of the, the scotch. Um, we are making it fairly basic today, um, two to one ratio. Um, Two parts of the base spirit, 50 milliliters, two shots, whatever you want to call it, and one part of the vermouth. When you're trying this drink at home, if you have different kinds of vermouth, or even different kinds of whiskies, if you want something that is, let's say, smokier, you go all the way to ILA, or maybe um, uh, Sky, like Talisker for instance, um, I think that you might have to change the ratios. and. Do it according to your own taste, so to say, because that's the most important thing, that you enjoy the drinks that you make and that you drink, so. Standard recipe is usually two dashes. I think it works really well in this drink, and this is kind of a light style aromatic drink. But, since I told you about the variables of this drink, you can change the whiskey, you can change the modifier at the vermouth, you can change that to a Pedro Jimenez if you want even bigger body and more sweetness to it. And you can also change the aromatic bitters to a fruit bitters, maybe uh, orange. You can change it to angostura. You can even change it to absinthe if you use two dashes of that kind of sharp and easy flavor. Why we stir this drink instead of shaking it is just to keep a nice silky texture to it and to have some control over the dilution. And I think the point of this drink is to take the edge of the, the whiskey and rounded off, so to say, with the sweetness and the herbs from the, the vermouth. So we stir it a few times. I can't really say that you have to stir it 30 times or 52 or whatever. Stir it until it's cold. If you're unsure, taste it while you're making it. But like lots of these aromatic drinks, they do benefit from quite a lot of dilution. Plus you want it to be icy cold. Speaking of icy cold, when you serve a drink in a glass without ice, you want to make sure that you pre shield your glass. So I've turned my glass upside down here, my crushed ice, which is probably not to um, recommend if you work in a busy bar because you might actually break your glass in your station. But just for you guys, I went a little bit living on the edge, so to say. Otherwise, use your freezer if you can. Um, no ice. Straight up. Make sure to get everything from your glass in because you don't want to waste anything, especially when it's this nice. The last variable that you can work around on when you serve a drink or even make it at home is the garnish. 
uh, considering that it's something for either the eye or for the nose or for both. In this case, we're going to use the forbidden fruit in the bottom, a little cherry, like a little reward, like a little sweetness after this strong aromatic cocktail. But you can also use like a lemon zest or even orange. I think that you all should try to um, find your own way of serving these drinks. And like I said, different whiskies work with different kinds of garnishes. So this is the Rob Roy, two to one, Scotch whiskey, sweet vermouth, and just a few dashes of aromatic bitters. And like a wise man once said, tip your waitress.